My fondest memories include going back, let's just say, one generation before because as a child my mother was uh, president of the Cleveland, Ohio chapter. So I had an opportunity to grow up with her as a model and I think that's probably the uh, most important uh, mentorship in my life. Well, I know it is the most important membership, but particularly through Jack and Jill. Uh, during that time, it was very interesting during that time because we're talking about the 60s, the 70s, uh, very early. And uh, of course, it was the Civil Rights Movement. Um, I was very involved. And uh, to be honest with you, I didn't always see the significance of Jack and Jill. I knew it was more social in my mind than civic related. So I had to balance those two. But creating that balance was very important as I grew up and became a mother in Jack and Jill. Uh, based on my experiences as a child working with uh, the civil rights movement, I was a freedom writer. Uh, I was trained by Martin Luther King for uh, many of the marches that included uh, the march in Selma and the march in Washington, D.C. Uh, getting that firsthand experience and that passion uh, for civil rights and for, for uh, civil disobedience at the time, but uh, <clears throat> integrating that into the goals and the objectives of Jack and Jill as a mother became very important to me. And of course, when I had children, it was there, it was just paramount, paramount in my mind that I would have to include my children in Jack and Jill. And teaching them through their participation that service is the rent that we pay to live on this earth. I just knew that that would be the uh, most important goal that I could achieve as a parent through my children. When I moved to Detroit, it was uh, so interesting because I was alone for the first time as a mother, as a parent uh, with two children. So Jack and Jill became my family. It became my extended family. And all the mothers, particularly the mothers in my age group, just adopted us. And we were very safe and secure within our cluster, uh, it, not just within our city, but regionally and nationally. Uh, the input was fantastic. The, the, the kinds of opportunities that my children uh, were a part of. I'll just give you one little uh, quick incident that occurred, and this was when my daughter was at the University of Michigan. Uh, of course, she had graduated out of Jack and Jill, but the first thing she saw when she went to the University of Michigan was the Jack and Jill t-shirts. <laughs> and she said, oh my goodness, I, I have friends, because she had been a part of the regional and the national programs across the years with Jack and Jill. So that was important to me. Uh, one, one time she went to a football game in California. There was a great big football game, University of Michigan, the Rose Bowl. And uh, she was supposed to meet a group of women, a group of uh, students, a group of students at the airport so they could go on to the game. She got to the airport and guess what? Nobody's there. <laughs> and she missed the whole group. She calls me in a panic. I said, oh, hello. Uh, I know just what to do. Jack and Jill mothers are everywhere. <laughs> and we have mothers across the the nation that are there to support even if we don't know them. So I made a quick call. There was a Jack and Jill mother at that airport within 20 minutes taking care of my child. So I just feel that uh, not only was it uh, important for them and the uh, types of objectives and goals that I have matched those of, of my friends, everybody was connected, everybody was willing to help, and it was my family. Oh, being an associate is such a wonderful thing. <laughs> um, I remember, you know, towards the end, if you're a Jack and Jill, of course, you're going to stay uh, in it until your child graduates, and then what? <laughs> you know, you do miss it. You really do. You miss it. You don't always miss the work, but you miss the family. You miss the camaraderie. You miss the social. You miss it. And um, there are so many stages in life. Uh, that was a very significant stage for me, and I'm sure for most people, uh, raising your children uh, with Jack and Jill. Now, as a grandparent, I see uh, that they're involved again. I still support their <laughs> opportunities for involvement in Jack and Jill. Uh, everyone can't financially afford Jack and Jill, and so I want to help there, and I do help. Uh, 
Looking at the associates though, it's just a great group. I love going to national conventions where uh, the Jack and Jill National Board uh, has not forgotten us. I think it's a, a great opportunity to still help in many ways if there's uh, anything that we can do. It might be small, it could be on the local chapter level, regional level, national level, uh, but I think the continuity of leadership thought is good and being recognized feels good. I, I appreciate you for what you do. Um, I really want that associate group to understand their importance, uh, not just the social importance. Uh, again, uh, being a strength, somebody who's got your back. We've got you, Jack and Jill. We do. We have a long history of what can or cannot happen and how we got through. Uh, we can help you get through. <laughs> so uh, as associates, I think it's important to uh, grow our group, to let people know that they're not forgotten, that they still have worth, and that uh, Jack and Jill means a lot. It has meant a lot in the past when we had children, and it remains in our hearts. So, so associates, come on now, come on associates. We have a lot to do, we have a lot to give. And I appreciate my role as an associate. I have fun, and um, I'm looking forward to helping in any way I can. Well, as I mentioned before, I grew up around leaders. <laughs> and at the time that I was a member of the uh, Cleveland chapter, my mother was president then, but as a mother in the Detroit chapter, um, I was a very happy member, just you know, going along, doing what I needed to do, and it, it just became a real passion. It was such an important part of my life, my children's life, even my husband's life. <laughs> Everybody was so super involved, so it became a natural uh, inclination to look at what we could provide as, as far as leadership. My children were leaders in their groups, and. Uh, we were very strong with supporting and starting actually the Father's Auxiliary. So ideas that um, just accumulated over the years became a part of what we thought might be helpful. And to do that, uh, sometimes you do have to become a leader. Sometimes you do have to step up and, and get out of your comfort zone. Uh, so at the time, um, I went through the process, all the different uh, offices in Jack and Jill in the Detroit chapter, and I became president of the Detroit chapter. And I mean, as most of you probably know, after being president of the Jack and Jill chapter, you can do anything in the world. It's just, uh, you know, but we just went to a uh, regional. We went to a regional uh, as members, and we were just having a great amount of fun and there was a vacancy as in, in the MAL position. And the rest is history. We, we went to the dollar store, we got a lot of paper money. I put together sp a speech, I spread the paper money all over <laughs> the meeting and said, we are here, we are gonna support the foundation. And, and that's what happened, I was elected uh, MAL. So from there, I uh, had a better glimpse of what leadership is about. Uh, outside of the local chapter and the regional and national level. And my mother was still national pres uh, president of foundation. She had been for 10 years. So uh, when I went to the uh, levels of regional and national, and I knew a lot of people through her, and uh, they supported me. They not only supported me, they pushed me. They pushed me <laughs> into these positions. Oh, you can do that, it will help you, you know, it'll be great. You have such great ideas, etc. So uh, it just happened, not because I set out for it to happen, uh, but there was an opportunity, I was prepared, and I had a passion for it. When I reflect on my presidency, which was from 1996 through 1998, um, I remember, first of all, that we had a very definite goal. Uh, we capsulized that in our theme, which was focus on the future, fulfill the dream. When we looked at the word focus, we definitely put the F first, because our focus maintained our focus throughout that presidency. Uh, that we would make sure that not only during our administration, but hopefully throughout uh, and into the future, that we would also always look at families and children first. 
That's what Jack and Jill is all about. So we were very, it was very important that we focus on the future. The O was for organizational change. Uh, although Jack and Jill at that point uh, had been very organized, we were going through a period where we did not have national headquarters, it was in transition. Many issues were in transition and needed to be solidified, needed to be enhanced. So organizational change structure is important. If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So we didn't want that to happen. We wanted this to be very clear, very uh, leader driven in a way that it was inclusive of everyone's thoughts, everyone's needs. So the organizational piece with the uh, O representing organizational change. And the C, we wanted to be a catalyst for change. At that period of time, there was so much going on. Although we had gone through a historic period of civil rights, our children still were definitely in need of more educational programs. In every community, there is and was and remains a serious need. And we knew that through our intervention, through service, that we can and, and would be a catalyst for change. The U uh, was for the unity of purpose. We look back on the goals of Jack and Jill, never forgetting our past and enhancing what we knew would be important for our future, for our present, for the new millennium. At that time, we had no computers, we had no cell phones, we had no technology that we have now. So that catalyst for change really stepped up during that period, 96 through 98. And we first had email, we never had email before, uh, and we realized that only about 50% of the population had a computer. 50% of the Jack and Jill families had access to a computer. But with that, that was a baseline. We knew that we could inc increase our communication, that we could structure our finances, that everything would be different, but it would be better with the use of technology. So we tried to be a catalyst for change, just stepping that process up. And the O is shared decision making. Uh, it was not a, a time, nor should it ever be a time, where leadership was dictating. It was never that. It was also uh, an opportunity through the technology that we could get more involvement. We could share and we could look at the needs of individuals, of chapters, of regions, of, of everyone together in unity because if we don't have that unity of purpose, there's always going to be a naysayer here or some distraction here which would slow down the progress of the uh, realize, realization of our goals. So with that we looked at shared decision making and that was very helpful. Putting together an input from our strategic plan so that everyone knew and had an opportunity to participate in that process uh, so that with that strategic plan we would create a roadmap for our two years and for the years to come. I'd like to go back to 96 through 98 because that's when I had an opportunity to uh, really look at Jack and Jill and look at the past and look at how uh, far we've come uh, with the opportunities that we've had to make a difference in the lives of children, in the lives of families, in the, in the lives of our community. Uh, with that focus on the future through that period of 96 and 98, uh, we've looked at the different programming issues that Jack and Jill at that point uh, needed to focus on and try to create op new opportunities that we may not have had in, in 80 uh, years, in this 80 years that has already gone by. Fathers had an opportunity to serve and to be a part of Jack and Jill, not only at the local level where they have been so important with activities with, with children, uh, they had an opportunity to become um, in a part of the regional and the national discussions across the nation, giving input and just bonding with each other, which that, that had never happened before. So with the first uh, Father's Auxiliary headed by Fitzroy Young from California, 
we were able to not only un unify the fathers, give them a focus and an opportunity to communicate. They created their own newsletter and they had their own objectives and goals. They met at the national conventions. And uh, I think that was very important. We saw a growth across the nation in Jack and Jill chapters and we knew that uh, we had to have a unity of purpose across the, the nation as far as programmatic issues. So with that, we looked at the issues relating to meaningful activities, the programmatic issues in each of the local chapters, and gave them an outline uh, of objectives and act of activities, shared information with the first use of the internet. internet. Our 96 through 98 group uh, used the internet for the first time to actively engage all of the chapters. We also used the internet and our technology to enhance our financial uh, objectives through the use of Quicken and teaching all of the chapters how to use uh, Quicken programs. Uh, we wanted to make sure that there was a technology advance using everything possible at that time to increase communication. We looked at all of the avenues that had to do with foundation and with service. We wanted to increase our service and we felt the best way to do that was to align ourselves with other organizations, other like-minded organizations. So we created opportunities outside of Jack and Jill to uh, merge our programs and, and to enlarge our programs and to look at opportunities with the Children's Defense Fund, uh, with the links, with other organizations that would be important to us to work with and easy to work with. There was a transition so it was not just Jack and Jill and I think that increased our opportunity to serve our community across the United States. We also had chapters that uh, were looking into opportunities internationally so it was not just a, a local or a regional or a national effort but also uh, an effort that would affect children all over the world. Uh, Jack and Jill as we go into the next millennium uh, has to look at our membership. So we, we made sure that we looked at the membership. How are members being recruited? Uh, is there any unified way? We looked at the strategic plan, for example, and saw that there's, there's a lot of input there that could come from the chapters that could, could increase that unity across the United States and how members are recruited. So it's not the old Tea Party concept of Jack and Jill. I wanted to make sure through our programming issues and through our communication that uh, PR was increased. So people did not have that impression of Jack and Jill as this, this elitist group, uh, this group that didn't have contact or did not give back. Uh, with the use of the PR that was increased, we had contacts through Ebony Magazine and Jet Magazine, and we created our own uh, computer issues that would be that would be given an opportunity to uh, share with each of our chapters, so they didn't have to create the PR. The PR was available for them to use. But changing the perception of Jack and Jill in the community. Yes, we were able to reach a few, but reaching the larger with the, what is Jack and Jill all about and how well we helped the community was important during those two years, and I think it will always remain that way. So we are not perceived as an elitist uh, group, but we are perceived as a service group, a service group that focuses on children. So much has changed and yet so much remains the same. We're still facing oppression, racism, educational inequality, family destruction, political insanity, economic devastation, health challenges, and even blatant poisoning in some areas of the world like Flint. So we know that the need for Jack and Jill will always exist. And looking back and looking at the present and looking toward the future, uh, we have to learn from the past. And I think that's very important for every Jack and Jill member to know and every Jack and Jill leader to learn from. We have so much uh, organizational thought and wisdom uh, to pass on to the future generations. We have members who come from all walks of life our potential is just so potently powerful with opportunities to serve. So when I look at Jack and Jill, past, present, and future, 
I just see service. I see service to our families and I see service to our communities. Looking at uh, what has happened through the years and now looking at 2016, we, our challenges may be a little different, uh, but our love for our children will never change. That love will just catapult us into opportunities to give and give and give, to teach our children to give, and so that perpetuates when they grow up that they will have that same passion for service. So what I think that we look at, at the, in the future, and I hope Jack and Jill, uh, through that installation of love for service and through that installation of love for programming opportunities, for education, for uh, political involvement, uh, all types of areas, health, uh, technology, we, we cover basically all that is needed to make our future brighter for our children and for children across the nation and the world. Uh, I, I remember the little story about the boy who was walking on the beach and uh, he saw a fish that was out of the water and uh, he wanted to help this little fish that was out of the water so he picked it up and he threw it back into the ocean. And someone came by and asked the little boy, well, why did you help that little fish? It's just one little fish. And uh, what difference does it make? There are thousands of fish in the ocean. And the little boy said, well, it made a difference to that fish. It made a difference to that one. And so that's what I think Jack and Jill does. We take that one little fish. We help that one little fish. It multiplies into thousands and thousands across the world. So with that, the future of Jack and Jill can remain bright. It can be, remain relevant. It can remain important to the children and the families of our world. Um, I think that we are going to face a lot of challenges in the future that we may not have had in the past. Uh, our world is more diverse. Uh, Jack and Jill is going to have to face those realities of uh, different racial mixtures, different uh, opportunities, even with gender issues uh, that may come up across the, the nation. And we have to work through that. We have to talk about it. We can't be shy about any issue that affects our families. Uh, we have to look at all of the issues that face our economy. We're facing a, a very um, different time uh, that has a lot of unknowns. Uh, for those of us who are Christians, we have to rely deeply on faith. But faith without works is not going to work at all. So it's our responsibility to provide those works. I like what they're doing in the chapters because the nation has provided through Jack and Jill um, a roadmap for what can be done and we give a lot of praise uh, for those who do it. I think that's important. You have to respect what people are doing in the local chapters. We have to give them assistance. We have to praise them when they meet their goals. At the National Convention, they wore little tiaras, the chapters that had finished those modules, and uh, I just thought that was wonderful, recognizing the excellence of the programming across the United States through Jack and Jill and how every Every chapter has some input in some way uh, to make this a better world. What I love most about Jack and Jill um, has to do basically with the quiet strength that Jack and Jill has. It's not something that is on the uh, forefront in every newspaper. Uh, it's not something that every person in the United States knows about, but the power of Jack and Jill is the, the potential of excellence for the future, the unity of Jack and Jill. I, I just love that part because you can become isolated in this world and you can feel powerless, uh, you, but when you're a part of something that is so significant, so organized, uh, so based on not only Christian, but ethic, uh, morality. So, so based on what everyone in, as a parent would want for their children, when you're a part of something that large, uh, you don't feel alone, you feel the strength. Uh, you know that anything is possible if we work hard and that we look at what our communities need, uh, what our families need, when we look at strategic plans so we're not stuck in, in the present but we're planning for the future. Uh, that's, that's what really sticks out as far as what I think Jack and Jill uh, is immediately. I, I just think of quiet strength. Um, 
knowing that even as an associate, uh, I can still give back through Jack and Jill. Uh, it's a lot of fun too now, come on, we, we have fun. But that's an important co component as well. If you don't have that friendship in your chapter, you're missing out. You are missing out in something so important. Um, as a mother, we need help. Every mother needs help. If, if you see a mother do, that doesn't need help, I would like to meet that mother because we all need help. And uh, just knowing that Jack and Jill is there for you, uh, knowing that you can give to not only your children, to make them stronger, to make them more prepa prepared and better leaders and uh, ac academically prepared, socially prepared, in all ways prepared, and, and sharing that with other children. It's not just your family, but it's the, the family of the whole nation that we're considering, particularly African-American family. So that need will never go away, um, but we have that quiet, quiet strength uh, to improve it. When I think about Jack and Jill and um, what I hope my legacy will be, and um, as you mentioned, being a grandparent of Jack and Jill children now, um, I see Jack and Jill through their eyes, but I also see it through the lens of the past and how they may not even know how they're perpetuating that legacy. Um, but if it became personalized, I would say that during my tenure as Jack and Jill, I really tried to make Jack and Jill less self-serving. I, I want organizations like ours, not just Jack and Jill, um, to really be meaningful. And let's just say, for example, you're, you're giving a, a large dinner dance and you have a budget uh, of $100,000 for this dinner dance. 75% of it should not be on the dinner and the dance and you and your friends and everybody having a good time. It's wonderful, I love having a good time, but don't let it become self-serving. Look at what you can do for others. I think that was what really got me through 96 through 98. Uh, knowing that if we could gear Jack and Jill into an area where we were not that elitist, self-serving group, that we were more focused on how we can become uh, a catalyst for, for change in our communities, um, looking at political issues. I don't know if we looked at political issues in that way before because you, there's a fine line sometimes when you have uh, foundation money or the 501c3s, you have to follow the rules. But that doesn't mean you can't or won't uh, be politically involved. Uh, so many rules are made for us by, but not by us. Uh, and if we have that input, if we have a voice, we have to use it. And we have numbers and we have strength. I talked about the quiet strength. It can be used in a very powerful way. And I think that was part of what um, I wanted my legacy to be, is that uh, you don't just accept things, that you see a need and you work on it and you become vocal about it and you use the strength that you have to make a difference. Um, and I think that goes back, way back in my life, and I'll just give you a little history of that, but I came from a small town in Georgia. I was born in a small town, town in Georgia where there, downtown there were two steps two levels of steps downtown. The sidewalk for white people and the sidewalk for black people. I came from an era when I personally had to go to the back of the bus. I was a little kid, sat in the front seat, was dragged to the back. Those are not just stories, that's reality. That is the reality of what it was. But through political action, through civil involvement of black people, of people just like you and I, we made a significant difference, not just in this world, but I mean, in our nation, but in the world. So I know the power that is involved uh, in involvement. You have to become uh, a nation of Jack and Jill members. Uh, looking back on that legacy from our founders. Yes, they got together for social reason, reasons, but it was because they were in an environment where that's all they could do. 
but it branched out from there because they were not self-serving. They saw a need, they addressed it, whether it was health, whether it was education, it was recreation, many times social, uh, but there was such an is isolation at that point. Well, we have different issues, but we have the same passion, and we are not self-serving, and we are a quiet strength. That was perhaps the hardest <laughs> question of all. And the first thing that came to my mind was family. It's, it is and has been, uh, for me, uh, family. And I hope that uh, present and future members think of it as a family as well. Because there's a lot involved when you say family. It's not biologically, biologically involved at all times. Uh, but the friendships, um, the camaraderie, the mentorships, uh, the opportunities to share, just common everyday issues, knowing that you always have somebody who has your back, uh, knowing that you can make a call to California to pick up your child who's lost in the airport, that's family. And uh, I think if we look at Jack and Jill as a family, we have to extend our family, we have to grow our family, that's what legacy is all about, uh, but it will always remain family.